Hello, Shirley Adams with Program 8, Series 2 of The Sewing Connection. We're going to continue where we left off last time with getting those sleeves to look very professional. After they're set in and trimmed and the drop shouldered varieties pressed, the unlined varieties seam finished, let's turn our attention back to suits with normal shoulder point seams because they need some character built in. Headings. And the puff sleeve blouses and dresses may need the same, but of different types. They may all need shoulder pads or, at least, until fashion's silhouette changes. First of all, what kind of pads do you use? If you have a suit with normal shoulders, as this one is with the shoulder points up here, it's going to be this type of pad. And it's shaped like this, and it's cut off just about where the shoulder is. And it stops not right at the seam, but it comes out into the sleeve just a little bit to make that sleeve stand out and to look very nice out there. So that's the shape that goes in this shoulder. In this one, which is a drop shoulder, remember this one comes on down the arm a ways, with this one or with a raglan sleeve, either one, or dolman sleeves, with any of those you'd have a pad like this that doesn't cut off right at the shoulder. It instead is curved down the arm a little bit so that it gives a smooth line so that you don't have a ridge where the shoulder point is. So it looks better this way. And then you'll have for blouses or dresses smaller pads. They won't be as shapely, they'll be thinner, and uh, they might be covered in the same fabric as the blouse. Uh, but anyway, this pad would go inside this sleeve. And again, it wouldn't go right at the shoulder, it would go out a little bit to hold up that sleeve, since this is a kind of a puffed sleeve out here. So first of all, let's see how you treat those uh, seams. The arm size after you have the sleeve all stitched in before you get around to putting in the pads or headers. If it's a blouse, and this is just a blouse, you want to, after you have the sleeve all set in and everything's just right, you want to do some seam finishing there. First I've cut this off to about a quarter inch seam, and then I've put some of the very thin tape, the seam's great or whichever, uh, around that and zigzagged it in place on here. If you have a serger, this is a great place to serge around instead of putting this uh, finish on it. So one way or the other, do finish that seam after you've trimmed it down short. If on the other hand it's a jacket or a coat and if it's going to be lined then uh, you need to do a little bit more. Here's one that I didn't have last time but it's one that's in progress right now so I'll show you with this sleeve all set in exactly what you should do to trim this down. Under the arm from notch to notch there is no reason to have that there. Every once in a while you see patterns tell you to uh, just clip it under the arms like this. Well now that's kind of dumb because that's just in the way so why would you want that stuff under your arm? Uh, the most sensible way if you think it through is to start right about where the notch is and simply trim it off so that it's about a quarter inch. Now especially with lined jackets you're going to need that to be trimmed down uh, to about a quarter inch so that the lining can come up and around and fit nicely. So this will trim like this, and if I had smaller scissors, they might be a little bit easier. This is kind of heavy fabric. This is a heavy, no, those big scissors are better, the shears, because this is a heavy wool double knit. And so I'm trying to get past all these seams. Okay, and then it tapers out to about nothing at this notch. So it's under the arm from notch to notch that you trim out a quarter inch, both of them the same. Above the arm, I really like to, up on the cap of the sleeve, I really like to leave those interfaced areas of the uh, bodice, of the body of the coat there, but all these ripples that are in the sleeve. Sometimes you can press these out, steam them out. I usually don't even try, or very often I don't, because sometimes you make the job worse by trying to press them out. So if you have a problem with really smooth caps, it might be better just to do a little trimming on the sleeve only. Notice is where I'm doing this. And I'm only doing that, oh, about a uh, quarter inch off, so I'm leaving about three-eighths probably. And I'm just doing this around the cap of the sleeve, and the sleeve only, not the body of the coat, not the bodice. So I'm just doing this from about notch to notch over the top. And then once you have that all trimmed, then you're ready for the next step. And what that next step is, is putting a heading in, because as you can see, this just looks flat. It has no character. It needs to have something more here. It needs to have a little padding there so that you can't see the seams through, so that you can't see the ridges. So a good way to put that padding in is like this. And what this padding is, uh, it might be lamb's wool or something called llama wool. 
It might be just this fleece, and this fleece you can get in any interfacing department because more commonly they all have this in case they don't have the lamb's wool. But this fleece comes in uh, sheets, you buy it by the yard, and one way it does not stretch. This way, the lengthwise way, it doesn't stretch. Crosswise, it has some give. Cut your strip crosswise. And this strip should be about as far as it measures from one notch to the other around your shoulder so that you go from notch to notch because that's where it's going to go inside. And I usually, before I start putting this in, I just sort of round these edges so that uh, there won't be any little points sticking out anywhere to show from the outside. They aren't going to. It's soft, but I do that anyway, just sort of a general practice. And then where I want this to go is in between the sleeve and the seam allowances. It's going to go in between there so that it pads nicely from the outside and gives them, as I said earlier, some character. So I'm going to fold this, just to remind me how I want it done. I'm going to fold this with the longest side, the longer side is here toward me. The shorter side is there uh, closer to the seam allowance is where it'll be. And this whole strip, I don't think I told you, is probably about two inches wide. Make it wide enough so that it will completely uh, cover the seams that are there in your sleeve. So it's going to be placed right in here. But for right now, I'll open it up because that's how I'm going to put it on. So notice when I have it all inside the sleeve, then this is how it will look. There will be the seam allowances. There will be a shorter fleece layer, and there will be a longer fleece layer. And then there's the sleeve out here. So it's all nicely beveled, and it will give just the right character to that sleeve cap. So the easiest way, or one of the ways anyway, to get this in is to... Uh, right about here in the middle. I have about the halfway point and I have that located at the shoulder. So I'll put a pin there just to get it attached and I'll do the same thing around. And I'm going to just slightly stretch this as I work with it. This is why we wanted to use it crosswise so that it would stretch because it molds more nicely into the sleeve and it does a better job. It really looks nicer if you use it the stretchy way. So this one also. If you are using woven fabric, such as lamb's wool, you might cut those strips on the bias instead of on the straight or the crosswise, because that would be the way of the greatest stretch with a woven fabric, and it would do the same job. It would mold more nicely into shape if it stretches out slightly. Then after you have this all pinned in place, then you do some hand stitches here. You could do it on the machine if you want to also, but it's just a really quick job, and so you might as well just do some hand stitches here. So I would do them like this, just come through, and I want to make sure that I'm only stitching to the seam, and I want to stitch as close to that seam as possible. So I'm kind of feeling where the seam is with my finger underneath there, but if you can't feel it, you might just flip it over if you'd prefer. I'll take this pin out to get rid of it, but you might just flip it over and do it from this side if this is going to be easier for, for you to make sure that you stay in the seam allowance and don't get out into the coat at all because if you do get into the coat you'll have dimples or you might even have the thread actually showing. But these are just big stitches and notice each one wherever I come up I take a little back stitch. That's just to sort of secure it that's so that it won't uh, gather up it for any reason so that it holds in place more firmly. And after I have this whole thing all done from whichever side you prefer to do this and I'm not going to actually do uh, this all the way because it'll take too long. But after this is done, and it doesn't really take long, it really does just take a few minutes, but I have a lot of other things to show you, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this one process. So after this is in, then we're going to think about pads. I'll get just a couple more stitches here so it goes past the shoulder seam so that you can see what, what's happening. The fact that it does look so much better it makes an amazing difference in the suit. Now all patterns won't tell you to do this but it doesn't matter whether they do or not do it anyway if you want your sleeve to look a lot better. Now eventually, someday shoulder pads will probably disappear. They'll get smaller at least. But even after they disappear, I'm still going to do this inside suits. I still would like to put a little bit of a pad there. See how it now rounds out a little bit and it just looks so much nicer than it did originally when it was so flat and uh, well, without character. This one just gives a better look. Then we need to put a pad inside. Now this, obviously, is going to be a lined jacket. Nobody wants to look inside and see these uglies. So I would not have a covered pad in here. I would just put the pad in the way it is right here because it will have lining covering it later. But this is how you put it in a pad. I can't believe how many people put it in the wrong way. Uh, you don't want all that thickness up here next to your neck. 
you want the thickness out here at the edge. So you always put it in like this with the very slim, flat part near your neck. And out here is the padded part. Now, usually on the pattern envelope, they say to use, oh, maybe a half inch pad or whatever. Now, it's kind of hard to measure these, but if you'll just put a pin through until you can feel it, stick your finger underneath and then mark your place wherever that was. Then you can pull the pin out and measure how big that pad is. This one is about three quarters of an inch. So it's a larger pad. Um, it's going to be fine for some things. It would be too big for others. If, by the way, it's too big, these molded pads that you buy usually have different layers. And there's no reason why you can't kind of pull them apart and get out a little bit of that padding so that you don't have it quite as thick. So this is a possibility, too. Then, as I put this on, notice I'm not putting it right at the stitching line. I want to get it out here a little beyond and that keeps those sleeves rounded, those sleeve caps, because that's what makes them look very nice and professional. And notice how at the neck edge of this pad there's a little notch cut there. That's just to show you how to place it and in that notch I'm going to put right on the shoulder seam. I'm going to have this placed out here and then I'm going to flip it to the right side to make sure that everything looks right out here and that it feels right. Now what I'm feeling notice down here on both sides is, did I have this located so that the points of that pad, I'll turn it right side out again, wrong side out, I want it located so the points of this pad are about equally distributed so that one of them doesn't point out or poke out into the sleeve and the other one stay in the uh, bodice. So that's what I was making sure of, that they felt like they were just in the right position and they do right now. So I'm going to put a couple of pins here at the top and then there are a couple of ways I can attach this pad. I can, if I prefer, just uh, stitch in the ditch here from the outside, or I can go back to the inside and stitch it to the seams. Just because I like to stitch not only on the shoulder seam, but also around the arm's eye to have that pad really firmly attached, uh, I kind of like to do it from the outside if possible. Now why I like to attach that pad firmly all the way along here is because sometimes in the cleaning process, that pad can kind of bunch up inside and it comes back and you have those funny knobs in your shoulder. Well, to avoid that, I want to make sure that it stays here in place all the way along. So, very often I do a little pinning here on the outside, both front and back, so that it does stay right in place. And I'm pushing the seam allowances of the sleeve and of that header that I put in. All those seams, all those layers, I'm pushing out into the sleeve is where you want them. You don't want them to double back into the jacket. They need to be in the sleeve. So with it in this position, then I can do a little bit more stitching. And I'm going to stitch in the ditch, as I said. Now, I, I'm using a contrasting thread, and for goodness sake, you wouldn't do that. You actually would use the same color. But I'll start up here on the shoulder and do it first, and then I do around the arm's eye, maybe. And I'd start underneath with a knot. I don't have a knot in this one, but... Uh, that's where I would start and come right up in that seam well. Make sure it comes right up in the seam. And when you have that up and in place, I'm going to try to not pull it out since I don't have a knot on the inside. Uh, then you take a little back stitch here too. Do not pull these stitches in tightly because then you get a dimple every place you have a stitch. So I always want to come up right in the seam and I'm trying to do this. And here it is in the seam. Again, I'll take this pin out to get it out of the way. So it stays in the seam, but I'm just going to pull it so that it, it goes smoothly against the jacket, but I don't actually want to pull this so tightly that it pulls in a dimple, so be careful about it. And this also is just a very quick process to go down this pad. Just takes a couple of minutes to go down the shoulder. So it really isn't a problem at all. Doesn't take any time. A few stitches here. And uh, after we have the shoulder stitched, then we would do the same thing around the arm's eye. Now, if you aren't going to do this around the arm's eye, you could just, on the inside, stitch this to the seam allowances. But it's kind of hard to do all that from the inside if you actually want to attach as much of it as I do. And after we're finished, go ahead and secure a knot, bring it to the inside, and tie a knot there, and you're going to be finished. So that's it for the shoulder seam, and it looks pretty good. Even though I used a complete contrast in thread, you really can't see it, I don't think, because uh, in the seam well, uh, it blends in, so it's uh, a very easy job to do that. Okay, that's how that pad should look, and then you're ready to line it. Now, there are times when you aren't going to have a, a lined jacket. You're going to have it without lining, 
And if that's the case, you certainly wouldn't want to put this pad inside a jacket that isn't going to be covered up uh, with lining. This isn't very pretty. So let's talk a little bit about how you do that padding. Um, here's this shoulder pad that I showed you in the first place, the one for the squared off shoulders that looks like this. This is a really easy one to cover if you need to, if you're going to have that unlined jacket. And with this one, I would cut a big enough square of fabric that it's going to accommodate this pad. Now this is a square of fabric. It's cut on grain. But the fact that I folded it here means that right across the corners here, this is a 45 degree angle, so this is bias. And that's what I want, bias, because it stretches and it molds beautifully then around the pad if the fabric stretches. So I'm going to enclose this pad inside here. This is the shoulder end of it here that I want to be in the fold of the fabric. And as I have it all pushed around nicely, see how I can stretch it out here? See how that, the wrinkles, see how they pull there? That's the good quality of bias, the fact that you can mold it to shape. And I'll put a couple of pins here to hold it. And if I want to, I could then just go right to the serger to uh, finish up this edge. On the other hand, if I want to be very careful about this, if it's a, especially if it's a really well-shaped pad, if it's real shapely, then I might want to do this on machine first, do a little stitching on machine before I take it to the serger to stitch the edge, just to make sure everything works out right. So I'll put a couple more pins here and show how we do that. Okay, at the same time I'm pulling this down in front for, to put the pins on, at the same time I'm doing that, I'm trying to smooth this out from the back side. And I don't quite like the way this looks on the back side right now, so I would probably start over again and get these pins going, doing something a little nicer, so that all this would smooth out, because this, after all, is what you're going to see when you look inside your jacket. This is the part that's closest to your body, or the side that's closest to your body. So we want this side to look nice, to be just right. So I might just instead put my pins on this side to get it looking right. The outside's the easy part, but that's going to go against the jacket, and nobody's ever going to see it. This is the part that must look good. Now, I doubt that when you take that jacket off, anybody's going to examine the inside anyway, unless you tell them you made it, and then they'll want to see what a wonderful job you did and might look it all over. But otherwise, uh, maybe it isn't going to be seen by anyone, but it's going to be noticed by me, and I'm going to feel better when I wear it if I have it done really well in there. So to me, it's always important to have it well finished. Okay, I've just transposed these pins to the inside instead. And then on machine, I'm going to do a little bit of stitching here. And what this stitching is going to be, I'm going to be feeling it as I go along because I haven't trimmed this off at all. I want to feel where the edge of the pad is because I want to stitch somewhere, maybe a little on the outside of it, but somewhere right close to where the edge of the pad is. If you feel any better about it, you can hold this up to the light, which I shall do, and you could trim some of this off so that it comes up closer to the pad. And maybe this would be easier for you to work if instead of feeling it, you could uh, see very easily what happens. So either way, here I've just cut it off, so now it's really easy. Okay, now that it's cut off and you can see the pad's just close to the edge, uh, now I really wouldn't even need to do it on machine except the pins are holding it there and I can't put those pins on the edge through the serger. Therefore, I will have to do this on machine just uh, so I can get the pins out. I'm going to make big stitches because they are really not terribly important except for holding it together long enough to get the pins out. So I'll just stitch around here. And as soon as I get all the way around, then I can put the same thing on the serger and finish it up over there. Okay, and we'll cut that off. And we'll take out the pins and move over to the serger and do a real quick edge on this. And you have really nicely finished pads. Now I would do this on anything that doesn't have a lining, just so that it really looks super in there. Come on, little fabric, get under there. It's a very soft fabric. And as soon as I get going, I can get my hand out of the way. I realize I'm in your way. Okay. Anyway, not too hard to cover a pad. You can do that very nicely. If you don't have a serger, you could also do some zigzag stitching or something of that sort around the edge to finish it off so that you do have a pad that looks nice inside your jacket. 
Now, if we're going to work with these pads over here in the center, remember these are the ones that don't end right at the edge. They curve down over your arm a little bit. This is not quite as easy to do uh, as I just did the last one. It's the same process with one little exception. It has an indentation here. It's a cup uh, rather than, as this one is, just flat there in the bottom. So the fact that this one cups, I want to get a pin in here and do a little bit more work. And when I do some, uh, besides then securing all the edges, I would do. Also, right here, I would take a couple of hand stitches just to hold the lining fabric up against the pad so that everything stays in place well. But other than that, it would be the same process. Now, here's where something might be a little different over here in the blouse. And there are both different ways to uh, shape the shoulders as well, or the sleeves, as well as the shoulders. Okay, here's what I have here. I have these pleats in this sleeve, and I want them to be held out in some way. And the way those pleats are held out is like this. Instead of that fleece that we put as a header in the jacket, here's what I have inside the blouse. Now this might be uh, organdy or organza. It might also be, oh, any kind of crisp fabric, thin fabric. I have about three layers of this fabric, and what this is is something that you find in the interfacing department. It's a, a sheer fabric, and it's made just for things like this. You could also use it as an underlining or an interfacing in any sheer blouses or sheer dresses. Any thin fabrics is what you use it in. But here I have about, oh, three layers. I think I'm counting. These are the raw edges. It's not going to ravel, so you don't have to worry about the raw edges in here. But about three layers of that I have folded together. And when I did this padding is as I was constructing those sleeves, as I was pinning in the pleats, at that same time I pinned in this header, this crisp fabric, uh, so that those pleats would stay out nice and crisply because this is a washable blouse. It goes through the washer and the dryer and it comes out looking just this way, but it's going to look this way a lot more easily if it's already padded out with those neat little headers inside the sleeves. So that's why I put them there rather than putting them, uh, well, if you have pleats, it just needs to go into the pleats, I think, to keep those pleats really looking crisp and uh, built up a little bit. So that's where the header is in this. And then this pad was very easy to cover, but here's another header. Let me show you something here. Little uh, croissants. I sound like I'm ready for my mid-morning break and need a little bit of uh, pepper upper here. Uh, but these look a, just a little bit like pastry. Uh, these are some other headers that I purchased. These are commercially made, and you can find these in Notions departments in the fabric shops. And with these, they come in a great variety of colors. Instead of having this type of header that I had with this sleeve, you would put this little croissant inside, and that would fit nicely and hold the sleeve out also. So either way, whatever is more suitable for the particular style that you have here, and it always goes between the seam allowances and the outside sleeve is where that goes. Then with this pad, this was uh, the same as the one I'm holding here, and this one was even easier to cover because it is so flat. So it's uh, still a, a lot easier. Now, a lot of people prefer to not have pads in blouses, and this always presents some sort of a problem, because by the time you have a pad in the blouse, and then the, on top of that you have a pad in your suit, you could end up with a great big football shoulder here very easily. So, if you prefer not to pad everything, you have no choice but to pad the jacket as long as it has the lining in. It has to be there. And you might wear that jacket without a blouse at some time, Therefore, you have to pad that. This is where you might choose to not pad. Uh, just where, if it needs, if it's in the uh, fashion period where it needs pads, you might instead just use those uh, that come on and off that either attach to the blouse or to your lingerie or whatever. Uh, you could do those instead. But I really kind of like to have a pad in here, not only to wear, but on the hanger because I have a great deal of blouses. Maybe you saw my blouse pattern pizzazz once before with 100 blouses. Uh, since those are on hangers all the time, you can imagine how dreadful they would look just with a wire hanger underneath if they didn't have the pads to form this shape, this uh, framework. So I kind of like pads. So this is per personal preference, and you decide what it is that you want to do with these. But do try uh, some of these little extra things that you can put in the shoulders just to see how much nicer it's going to look. 
Now, uh, there are times when we aren't going to be wearing pads, as I said, in the future. I don't look forward to it. We're all going to turn back into pear shapes without shoulder pads. Then the hips look broader. So I really like to have those pads there. But if you're going to wear these suits or blouses beyond that point, look forward to the fact that you can maybe remodel them a little bit, get rid of those pads, and be able to uh, keep on wearing that even though you don't have the pads in it. So beware of that and get ready for it in the future. Well, as we look forward to uh, the future uh, and get away from these shoulder pads, as I said, they're a great framework for hanging on the body or on the hanger, but they're functional. That is their only purpose. They are functional. They are not decorative. Since they aren't pretty, I certainly don't want to see them through the fabric. See-through fabrics, thin fabrics, and the handling thereof will be the subject next time. Come join me for some sheer pleasure.